I personally don't like root choices which are equal. What do you think makes a good course builder? My main goal during uh, making the map, uh, cartography works and preparing at uh, the computer, uh, is to make the map as readable as possible. The course setting for sprint orienteering is the circle cutting and the line cutting. Hi everyone, today I'm talking with Rafał Pudziński. Uh, Rafał is a past pro athlete orienteer in Poland and nowadays he's most more focused on uh, pursuing his career goals in, um, in, in at least in terms of orienteering in map making and course building and he's also the winner of the um, course of the year contest that is held by World of O every year and his course the sprint course for um, it's like Pomoja Sprint Cup, I think, right? Uh, won yeah. the first prize competition. So I decided to invite Rafa to the channel and talk a little bit more about course building itself. But also I'll do my best to get you into the mind of the course builder for sprint courses so that maybe you will be able to find something that you uh, will be able to use during the competition and uh, achieve better results uh, because of it. So welcome, Rafael, to the channel. Yeah, hello. Nice to, yeah. nice to see you today and be here with you. Thanks. Uh, so the, the, the first thing I wanted to ask, so I have my notebook also over here, and I'm going to use it. This is actually the first time I'm going to use it because uh, during my last conversation last Saturday with Lisa Risby, sometimes she was talking about very interesting things, and I, have, I had like follow-up questions, and I keep, kept forgetting them. <laughs> so today I, can't <laughs> I have a notebook. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. use it. And before we started, I actually wrote one thing. So um, this, this contest that is on, on World of O is um, not, really, uh, not really based on uh, the, what really was the best course of the year. But some people might say that it's actually a popularity contest. So the person that gets the most amount of votes wins, right? So if you, if you have a good enough marketing and enough people go and vote for you, then even if the course is not great, you might win. But I am here to say, uh, as, a, a, as a fellow Polish runner, as a guy who has been running your courses for many years, I am here to say that you are a very good course builder, at least in my opinion, and hopefully in, in the opinions of uh, many other people as well. So I'm kind of saying that probably most of the people that have voted think the same way as I am, uh, as I do. And, uh, and I do feel that you put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into the courses that you're building. And as long, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a course that I didn't have fun on, even though I'm, and, you know, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge enthusiastic runner when it comes to sprint or eating. I prefer forest and I, and I don't hide it anywhere, but I do have fun on the sprint races uh, that you design almost every time. So, um, so I think that uh, even if someone would say this is a popularity contest, maybe it is, right? But still, uh, you're definitely a very, very good course setter. So I'm super happy to have you today with me. Um, so to, to, today, to have you here today with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, thanks a lot for, for all, the, all the nice things you said. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very much. Uh, it's it's nice all true. Me. So yeah. what do you think makes a good course builder? Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, uh, I usually or maybe always try to make the courses uh, so difficult and uh, so nice uh, during your, your, your race, during your run, that I would also like to run it by myself. So that's the, my, uh, I would say, like kind of uh, my motto. Uh, yeah, that's a good approach. Uh, yeah, good approach, I think. And uh, I, I always uh, try to do it. So that's the, my whole, I think, main thing. And uh, the next part is, uh, the next thing is that uh, uh, when I try to, uh, to build a like, difficult leg, maybe long leg, interesting leg, uh, then I always, maybe not always, because I, uh, I don't like to say always, I usually try to make it, uh, I usually try to make uh, the worse root choice look better. Because uh, there are some geometrical sizes, there are some um, other things that makes the runner want to choose maybe the wrong root choice. Yeah. And if he's not, if he or she is not prepared enough, 
uh, beforehand for the for this uh, actual root choice, then uh, he or she may may uh, may make a mistake. So uh, that's uh, I think the most uh, one of the most important things for me that. Uh, I usually try to make uh, the worst root choice look better for an orienteer at the first sight. Maybe not after analyzing, because uh, I I think that uh, when a when a competitor is good prepared, well prepared for the leg and for the whole race, uh, he or she should be able to find the best root choices. So, uh, but as I said, at the first sight, it might look tempting to ch to choose one root choice, which actually turns out to be worse. So. Uh, that's the thing that I try to do. Of course, it's not uh, always possible, and uh, I do not uh, do it always as well, because if I did something always, th uh, then somebody would just know that, okay, yeah. this looks tempting, so I choose the other one. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the other thing that I also uh, have to, have to uh, be careful uh, about when course setting. I have to admit that I that I do have this feeling. Like I'm I'm running the uh, the course and I see the next leg, for example, and I can feel that it's tricky, and I I, I see an easy route choice, but I'm always thinking, no, it can't be that easy. There must <laughs> be something else, right? <laughs> yeah, and that, that, and, and uh, as you are saying that, that's a uh, that's a huge compliment for me, as uh, because as a course setter, I I want the runners to feel that way because. Uh, that they feel, oh, okay, this course was set by Rafael. Uh, it 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 can't be that easy. So then, uh, then yeah. you have to think twice. But 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 as you say, you know, because you don't do it uh, always, right? Or sometimes it's not possible. You know, I, I I do struggle with it because I try to find a better one, and sometimes I can't see anything else. So I'm like, okay, um, you know, there is always this this trade of how much time am I willing to spend yeah, searching that's true. for that's an additional true. route choice versus just pushing forward uh, with, with the one I have. Uh, so I, I, I guess this is what makes it so much fun for me, at least. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You never know. You never know if it's that easy and that you just find, found the right route choice yeah. or you have to spend some more seconds to, to focus on that uh, the other time. Yeah. What, what I'm most afraid at these, um, at these moments during the race is that I, I don't see some tiny passage somewhere. This is... This is something that you know I, I fell into several times. I'm not saying your races, but in general, right? That that um, I saw a root choice, maybe one, maybe even two, uh, but then there was another one uh, through some small passage through the fence, and I, yeah, I missed I, that I, because it's hard to see those things while. Running. I understand that, and um, I think many many people are concerned about it, but. Uh, my main goal during uh, making the map, uh, cartography works and preparing at uh, the computer, uh, is to make the map as readable as possible. So uh, I, I like this, my sprint races to be like uh, not about who has the best eyes and uh, eyesight and who who sees all the things, but but to to really be an or orienteering sprint competition and uh, the, the best uh, person who chooses the right route choice between all the root choices he can easily see uh, wins. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the other thing uh, that is very important that uh, during the map making process, I really focus on it to, to really make the gaps really, really uh, wide to, uh, for, for everyone to, to be able to really uh, easily see it. Yeah, okay, cool. I mean, I mean that's probably one of, the, one of the things that makes you so good at it. Um, all right, I'm looking at the next one. Uh, that, that I have written down. And the next one is about the process of designing the course. So do you think that there is a process to the, the course design, the sprint course design? If, you, if I would ask you to put bullet points and write the process in bullet points, is it possible to do it? Uh, in some way, it's possible, I think. Of course, uh, you have some, uh, some, some information from the, uh, from the, from the main uh, organizer of the competition, like about the Finnish area and the, and the possible start places. So, so that's, uh, that's how you start, I think. You have to set the start and set the Finnish area. And uh, actually, later, there, later on, there are, I think, two approaches, which I actually both use. Uh, the first one is to just start setting the controls and setting the course as it goes. So first control, second control, third control, and so on. And uh, the second approach is to firstly find the best possible root choices uh, anywhere on the map, yeah. and then trying to combine them with the 
uh, beginning and the end of the course. So to to make it uh, uh, to make it like in a in a line, so that it's a it's a whole course. So would these you, are two you approaches. That, would, you, would you say that uh, depending on uh, like uh, how do you choose between the first approach and the second approach? Is it depend? It does depend on the map. That's what I would think. Yeah, I think it it, it, it depends on the map a bit. Uh, uh, because uh, sometimes when the map isn't uh, isn't that complicated, as I would mm -hmm. say, uh, the first approach uh, uh, seems a bit better for me. Because uh, at first, when I look on the map, on the start and the finish, then uh, in some seconds I am able to 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 draw lines in my head and see how the how the whole course should look like, like like this like the scheme of the course. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I just try to set the controls, the first, second, third, and then of course I make some little amendments to it, uh, and then the whole course just appears. So that's the thing. Uh, I think when the map isn't that complicated, or or in the situation that the the, the map makes you uh, choose the only way the course can go. For example, because sometimes it's it's the case that the start is, for example, far far away. And the finish is far away on the other side, so you have to just uh, go from the right side to the left side yeah. uh, to make the course. Uh, and and the length of the course, of course, is very important during the sprint race, not to be too long, uh, as it usually tends to be, rather than short. <laughs> and so so I always try to uh, to make the length as well as good as possible to to catch the 12-15 minutes gap for the winner. Okay, uh, coming back to the process because I interrupted you. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's uh, I, I mentioned these two approaches, and uh, and then uh, when I just join the controls, then the actual course is 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 on on my computer. I see it, and then uh, of course during this uh, process, when uh, picking the right route choices, uh, there are also actually. Two approaches that I use. That uh, sometimes I firstly measure the root choices in uh, in some uh, uh, computer app to to find uh, which one is shortest, and mm -hmm. uh, also to decide where I should put the control precisely in which place. To for for example, when I want the right root choice to be better, then I I try to put the control in a, in a such a place that the right root choice is better, but for some reason, the left root choice might look tempting for, for others. So that's the first approach that I firstly measure the root choices, left, right, and uh, some, some other, if, if there are any other root choices, uh, and then just put the, this control in, uh, in the exact place that I want the root choice to look like. So it's the first approach in this part. And the second approach is that I, uh, that I just look on the map, on the, on the root choice, and I just do not measure it beforehand, and I just put the control in the place that I think would be uh, would make a nice root choice for the runners, and I measure it afterwards uh, to see how it went. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it uh, it often is the case that when I start to measure it, it it turns out that the root choices are almost equal. Yeah, because uh, uh, I have. Uh, I I've made so many courses in my life that uh, that that my eyesight is so used to to finding maybe the uh, the best root choices that when I try to set the controls without measuring it just putting then then I put it uh, in the right place so that all the root choices are equal for example and that's the thing that I do not want to to appear on my courses so then uh, usually I have to put the control a bit to the left or right to to change it because I personally don't like root choices which are equal. Because uh, I would like the best runner who, ch who really chooses the best root choices to be like, uh, to get some price for it. So price, as I mean, less time in running. Yes, exactly. So I have a question connected with that. What kind of a difference between the root choices is good enough? Oh, it's really hard to hard to tell. Uh, it, it it really depends on the uh, on the length of, on the of the root choices. Of course, but let, let's say that the optimal one is three hundred meters. Three hundred meters. Then, uh, then the best way, if the map uh, 
um, gives the chance, then it would be the best would be 300 meters and the worst ones, for example, between uh, 350 and 400. But if the map is too easy and these route choices are geometrically too easy to recognize, then it's not possible to make like 300 and 380, for example, because uh, all the best runners would just find it in, uh, in a split of a second. So yeah. uh, that, that's no use to do it. So then I have to decide like for 330, because mm -hmm. then I think this 10%, uh, 30 meters, some of them might get caught on, on, this, uh, on this trick. Exactly true, right? So uh, sometimes I guess it is a challenge. Like, how, how do you build a uh, lag with different route choices so that it's not obvious, right? This is what you're talking about. And in a, in a difficult terrain, it's easy to do it. But in a terrain where you have just uh, you know a block of flats everywhere, uh, yeah, it's, actually, it's 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 challenging. Yeah, it's it's challenging, and it's, I think it's fair to say that the, in some kind of terrains you just cannot build like a superb course. You just yeah, can true. make a okay course. So it, the terrain is like a, the, the first thing it's, it, it all starts with. If the terrain is like uh, superb, then it's really easy to make a really good course. And to make a superb course, it maybe requires some, some, some uh, abilities. But in, in a bad terrain, like easy uh, block of flats, and as you said, then uh, I think almost everybody can can make just an okay course, or or make a very bad course if you just do not try to to give your best at this really bad terrain. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how it goes. Yeah, orienteering uh, is all about the terrain, so that's yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, so I, I get interrupted. Is is there anything to else to the process? Yeah, actually, when I when I all, all already have this course on my computer and all the controls I set, then of course I have to like put the control descriptions and so on. And the very important thing about the uh, uh, course setting for sprint orienteering is the circle cutting and the line cutting. Yeah. Uh, and of course, placing the numbers at the right places not to like cover anything. It's that's the thing that uh, that. Uh, unfortunately many people uh, like uh, forget or uh, don't think about because uh, then you you just uh, can spoil all the race the whole race because uh, if you like put the for example number four on on some narrow passage that uh, nobody can see and then it's not orienteering then it's guessing if it's uh, if it's possible to go there so uh, it really takes a lot of time to to check it so yeah yeah that's uh, time consuming but you have to do it to to get a great course yeah i, I actually had an experience with uh, something like this interestingly on a forest race not in a sprint race but last year uh, you were there so you know we were running the uh, club polish champs and I was running the first leg of the relay, which was at night. Oh, and yeah. I passed the, the, the spectator's control. And then the next control after the spectator's control was quite tricky. It was in a dip, um, not many distinguishable features around it. And I was really struggling finding it. And I kept going to this control, which was quite close by. And I tried many times to identify what is this control on. It, it looked like it stands on nothing. So I suspect, okay, if it's nothing, then you know maybe it's a small opening, so a small dot, yeah. um, a small yellow dot on the map, or maybe it's a hill. So I kept searching for this, but I couldn't find it. And in the end, it turned out that there was a small hill, but it was covered by the control number, and I couldn't see it on the map, couldn't find it, and yeah. that, that made me do a, a lot of a lot waste a lot of time there. So yeah, on sprint races, as you said, uh, even if you lose 30 seconds on the sprint because you don't see a narrow passage is already a big deal, right? Yes. So it's so a big deal even if you lose five seconds for me. I, I, I want to make the courses as fair as possible. Yeah. Of course, you, you cannot make them like 100% fair because uh, there are always cars parked somewhere. There are always uh, pedestrians going somewhere. Uh, there are always, uh, the situations that somebody can open a, a, a gate that should be blocked. So yeah, there are a lot of things that can happen during the race. But uh, be beforehand, I try to do everything I can to the uh, to, for the competitors to get a good course and good map. True, true, awesome. Uh, so uh, another one I wrote down in the meantime: if you're building a course c courses for a competition, there are there are often many categories. How much difficulty does it add? 
uh, to to cover all of those categories and how do you approach the building courses for like yeah, it, 20 different categories yeah, yeah it, it it adds some 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 more work of course but uh, uh, usually i i start building the courses from from the longest one that's the man elite usually uh, when I prepare this man elite class, uh, then I usually uh, try to combine this uh, man elite class with some other classes, for example, M20, M18. Of course, I, I, I have to make their courses a bit shorter, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I try to do it uh, without losing uh, the difficulty level of the course. Just uh, so the whole uh, like scheme of the course is the same for, for example, M18, M20, M21. Uh, I just uh, subtract some controls from the from the longest course to yeah. for the for the juniors, and for example, uh, afterwards I, I I build a course for women elite, and some completely different uh, approach, some some uh, completely different root choices than uh, than the uh, that the men have, and then afterwards I also try to combine this women women's elite course with for example women 20 women 18 and just also subtract some controls to make them shorter and uh, afterwards I, I I I try to maybe combine um, this men elite and women elite course into for example choose some root choice from the women elite some root choices from the men elite course and then combine it for example for the m35 course and then, then it's also my, for example, uh, main course right now. And I, I, I also, based on that, uh, make the courses for M4, M40, M45, and so on. So uh, I usually try to not, pre, uh, not to prepare so many courses. Uh, for example, when you have like, uh, like uh, let's, let's say 25 classes or something like that during the competition, uh, I usually prepare like, for example, six, seven of these uh, main courses, mm -hmm. like this, uh, these base courses, and then just uh, try to make little amendments to, to, to just fit the length of the courses, the winning yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that, it makes that's sense. How, that's how it goes. Because, it it uh, makes sense because there, there's a limited number of good legs that you can build. That's true. That's true. And I, I and I like uh, all the courses to be to be like difficult. Like, of course, not that difficult as, for example, Man Elite, like for M twelve, M twelve. But uh, I I try to make them as difficult as possible for for this age class. So uh, so I try this this legs to be to be as uh, interesting as possible for for everybody. So if I fi find, for example, like uh, five or seven very interesting legs on the whole map. Then I try to uh, to put as many as many classes towards these legs, so so they can like exactly. like run it and 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 have fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, another one they wrote is: what, what do you think about artificial barriers while building the course? Do you use it sometimes? Yeah, yeah, I I, I use it uh, of course, and uh, I think this artificial barriers like changed uh, all the way the the sprint orienteering uh, was about and is about right now, uh, because some some years ago when when it was not the case about the artificial bar uh, barriers, then uh, then you can just for example learn learn the map from the Google Street View, Google Maps, and so on, and you could all. You could really know the terrain by heart and just know almost all the route choices. Because if if there are no artificial barriers, no fences, just the the place that actually looks like that, for example, private areas that you know that here is private area, here is a fence, and so on, then there is a limited like uh, number of uh, of interesting route choices. So you can all you can prepare a map at home. For example, before the world champs and so on, and just measure them, and then then it's uh, then it was more about pure running. Of course, realizing the right route choices, like pursuing it, but uh, but it was not that much about about the the technical preparation, like uh, like your mind. And uh, I really like the concept of the uh, of the artificial barriers, but. Uh, I also know that uh, that it's a really really a tiny border between uh, over exaggeration with, with the artificial barriers, and uh, I don't like to use artificial barriers on a very slow passages uh, passages that you that this artificial barrier is like uh, 
half a centimeter on the map and you cannot see it. That's, yeah. that, that's the thing that I avoid because uh, if something is, uh, is, uh, is like blocked with the artificial barrier, I, I want it to be really visible from the map. So uh, actually it's the same approach that when I make a map, then I want to make all the passages wide enough for everybody to see it. And uh, with the artificial barriers, which I of course like and uh, like to use, uh, but I also try to use them only in the places that I can easily put them on the map with the big symbol and you can easily see that the passage is blocked and you know, okay, I can't go there. I have to choose some other route choices. And I, I, I am also not a fan of uh, uh, like uh, labyrinths of the artificial barriers because sometimes uh, uh, the course setters uh, used too many artificial barriers and just made the, the courses look like a real labyrinth. So yeah. it, it's of course okay for some fun competition and some, uh, some micro sprint orienteering is, is great. But uh, for me, it's for the, for example, uh, Polish sprint champs or, or world champs, I think that uh, using too many artificial barriers, like making a labyrinth that you really cannot decide which route choice is the best in a couple of seconds, I think it makes no sense because uh, then it's not choosing the best uh, orienteer, just just choosing the the one who who chooses best, even the best not, maze not, runner. Yeah, the best maze runner. Uh, even I, I think that it. It's, it, it brings too much luck then to, to this sport. It's, uh, and I, I think it's, uh, this exaggeration with the artificial barriers is not a good thing. So, yeah. so I try to... Uh, so I agree. I, I agree because, well, first of all, I like barriers uh, for, for all the reasons that you mentioned. Uh, actually, there is one more reason. I like them also for training purposes. And then yeah. uh, for training purposes, it's amazing that you can get the map that you've already been running 20 times on and yeah, you can still make true. it like like a new kind of a race. And of course, for the training purposes, we don't set up the barriers in the terrain. They're just on the map, but it's, but it's yeah, still that's, fun. That's right? a good it's thing. That's a good, but for the competition, you have to put them and you have to put the judge there. So that's the problem of course. <laughs> we yeah. usually have. Because of course. Not, there are not that many organizers that, could, that can help usually. So, so of course, we are like uh, limited about it. Uh, yeah, we, we, we always need more people. <laughs> yeah. uh, and another thing uh, that I think is nicely connected to it is like, uh, what, is, what is the principle of sprint race, right? If, if you look into uh, the um, regulations that the, the sprint race is supposed to be fast and isn't supposed to be super difficult when it comes to um, the map itself right, or the course itself. So again, uh, I totally agree that if you make too much of a maze using the barriers, it kind of beats the purpose of the sprint race uh, altogether. Yeah, yeah, because it stops to be fast, because you have to like uh, almost stop at the times to, 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 to just uh, check the map all the time. Uh, so it's it's not fast then, and it's it's uh, it, it 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 gets like a maze. That's that's a good yeah. that's a, that's a good well, name. I think. Although I ha I have to say that there is like a a small difference between having a very fast race and having a very fast race which is not boring at all, right? Yeah. And uh, that's the, the, true. The best feeling I get from sprint races is when I uh, come come to the finish line and I feel like there weren't parts of the race where I was bored, where I was running like 300 meters and, you know, I felt like I don't even have to look at the map because I know where I'm going and the next controls are also easy. So I don't have to focus too much on that. I, I like the ones where I come and I know that I have been forced to keep thinking all the yeah, time. Yeah, and that's yeah of the, course, that's the best thing. Yeah. But it's, it, it, it really needs a good terrain and then a good course. <laughs> but True. firstly, the terrain, True. that's the principle. True. All right, as a course builder, what traps do you make for runners? So you've already mentioned, like you try to make the worst route choice uh, look better. Look, look, look better. Is there yeah. is there something else that comes to your mind? Uh, some other traps that I I I, I try to use uh, <clears throat> uh, is, for example, to make uh, the so called the so called transport leg, like just just the pure running uh, leg to just to just. Uh, make the runner go for example much to the to the let's say east and and then the very long route choice on to the other side of the map and uh, this transport leg i uh, 
I use it for, um, uh, I, I have to I have to think how to say it. Uh, there are a lot of runners who who don't like to turn around and go in the other direction because they, especially nowadays when we have the CX and uh, the touch free yeah. timing timing system, uh, that they like to touch the just just punch the control without stopping and go in the same way that they uh, that they uh, ran before. So uh, sometimes I try to make a really even short transport leg to the, to, to the right, for example, or to the east, as I said. And then make a long route choice to the other side of the map. And uh, the the best route choice, for example, is uh, a route choice that you have to turn around and go back and uh, go to the, for example, the west route choice. So uh, I think that that's uh, some minor trap because if you are good prepared for the sprint uh, course and you have good tactics in your mind, then it should not look like this. That uh, okay, uh, I punch it and I have I, I can go further, so I just just run. Uh, but but it's a little trap, and I think this, uh, still still uh, still some people get get trapped. I think about it. And uh, the uh, the other one is uh, is which I like is also uh, this kind of route choice when at the beginning of the route choice you almost you can almost follow the straight line. So for example, the the beginning of the route choice is just straight really close to the to the course line but then just uh, close to the uh, to our um, to, to the controls that we approach uh, there are some barriers some some fences and so on and uh, and you just can't go can't go straight and you have for example to make a big turn a, a big uh, roundabout a big how to say it uh, well you have to go around something just to go around and big big road around just to lose a lot of uh, meters and uh, I like it because, uh, as, I, as I said, when you are not prepared, uh, it's really tempting when you when you see that the straight line. Oh, okay, yeah. I can almost like 100 meters straight line. Okay, that's that's the best route choice. Uh, I go there, and then okay, I don't see any passage here. Okay, so I have to turn around and go like uh, uh, some uh, 300 meters around. I, I guess example, it's a it's a great trap for people that don't read the map forward so much. Yeah, that's true, and I I really like my courses to to look like that. That that you really have to look to to read the map forward to to get uh, the reward, and the reward is just uh, less time spent on the course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's the, that's the third kind of trap that I like to use, uh, and that's hard hard to tell any any other right now. Okay. Um, okay, I, you... I can mention I can mention one more maybe, but uh, okay. maybe it's not the kind of actual trap. But uh, personally, I think for me and and for many runners that that I also competed against, it was really really tough to to pick the right long route choice when uh, before this long route choice we had uh, some really short tricky controls. Yes. Uh, so that's the other thing that I like to use, uh, that to make, uh, for example, four or five really short, even not that tricky, just uh, just in some park or or some some easy controls that you have to, uh, but 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 you have to focus on the right directions to get yeah. the right controls, uh, and then you get a really long route choice, for example, eight hundred meters long route choice to the other side of the map. So that's really really tough, and uh, actually. Uh, I am not sure if there is any any special uh, approach you you should do uh, you you should have as a runner when doing it because sometimes it's really uh, impossible to uh, to find that route choice during these uh, short tricky controls and I think that then you have to really stop for some three seconds and to look on the map and uh, spend this time to to really pick the right route choice because if a route choice is long then you can really lose a lot of time and and i personally really don't like courses which on on the for example longest route choice uh, doesn't offer you the possibility to lose time because uh, i think that there is uh, that, that that there's that, that then something went wrong because yeah. if their long route choice isn't like interesting and isn't like, like uh 
making the winners win and losers lose, then then what should do it? So I exactly. think that the long route choices should should be about losing and gaining time. So so before this long route choice, I think that it's it's better on a good course to to just stop for this couple of seconds and really find this best best route choice because it might cost you like uh, not five but twenty seconds, for example. Yeah. It perfectly actually connects with my next question that was uh, that is about any kind of themes there are in building courses for sprints. And, and, I, and I was going to give it as an example so that you know what I'm asking about. So uh, I thought that exactly this is a good kind of approach that before the long leg, you want to make maybe several shorter legs so that it's harder to pick the route choice beforehand for the long leg. Do you think there are any other themes in, in building courses for sprint races? Uh, yeah, there's also some uh, other theme. It's uh, qu quite easy to describe that that the that the, that the race starts with a long leg. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, some kind of an approach. Uh, but personally, I do not uh, maybe like that uh, there very much because uh, of course it might be tricky at the beginning when you have a really long leg at the beginning and you have like not that much time because you just get the map, have some fifty. Uh, 50 meters to the start, start triangle and have to choose the best route choice. Uh, but afterwards, when you are pursuing this route choice that you chose, you have plenty of time exactly. to think about the whole course, which, which is uh, just uh, ahead of you. So personally, I don't like this that much because uh, I think uh, it's maybe very hectic at the beginning and it's uh, like uh, get the runner might get nervous about the, the beginning of the course what should i do but afterwards he thinks oh the course wasn't that uh, that difficult because i could read everything on this first route choice and then it was just running so uh, i personally i i try to uh, to omit this uh, this theme but uh, sometimes i i think i also use that yeah. So that's uh, mm -hmm. anything else that comes to your mind in terms of themes? Uh, yeah, of course. This uh, I, I don't know it's, if it's like some kind of theme, but uh, mm, as I said, there, I think there are some types of runners that uh, some of them uh, like to use the passages and the route choices that they all uh, that they already ran through before. For example, mm -hmm. because they know yeah. how it looks like and and so on. So I think that then the good theme to, for it is to is to make the course like uh, uh, to not to use this the same passages all the time because some runners might use it because just uh, they just know it beforehand and yeah. like, okay I I know this place I know that there was a bakery uh, okay I will find myself so and they go there so I think that the also the right theme to to use is to uh, it's not to make the courses like this that you. Uh, all the time run in uh, using only one or two passages for the best route choices just to try to maybe like mix them a bit so that's the the thing that that uh, came to my mind right now what, what about the tiredness of the runner do you take it into account as well do, do you think like okay at this part of the race people will start to get um, tired how do i uh, use this uh, yeah, surely, surely, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's a good thing you mentioned. Uh, yeah, towards the end of the course, I think it's uh, uh, if you want to make a really challenging course, it's 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 nice to make uh, shorter legs, but requiring more uh, more uh, more mental strength. And uh, as you said, when when you are tired, then you you just not able to think that fast and that good. So uh, I think that. Uh, to make it more difficult, it's better to use some uh, shorter route choices at the at the end, not like uh, one long route choice. Because when they already spend time to choose it, then they just to have have to run and yeah. just just running. It's okay. They are tired. They maybe run a bit slower than at the beginning, but uh, but they still still don't uh, don't lose that time that much time. But uh, if we make uh, a lot of maybe not that decisive route choices, but uh, uh, legs when uh, maybe even not the root choices are the most uh, important part, but uh, but the uh, the part of uh, realizing them. Just uh, choosing the root choice and then, for example, doing some curves, left, right, left, second, right. Okay, so so then that we have to use our brain all the time, and I think that might be tricky for for the runner. So yeah, yeah, I I, I really like to to use it. If yeah. the terrain to use it well. 
Yeah, true, absolutely. So uh, actually, it, it came like it, it came to me right now a question that um, I also asked recently to Lisa Rispi, and I'm curious of, uh, about your opinion about it. So, what do you think about the split of the walk to sprint walk and forest walk? Oh, that's an uh, interesting question. Uh, personally, I I never. Uh, started thinking about it that way, if it's a good decision or not. I, I just took it as it, as it was. And uh, right now, it, as you made me think about it, uh, I think it, it works quite OK. I, I don't see it, it being like, uh, but of course, it's, it, it makes the runners uh, to like be specifically like focused on 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 one discipline uh, each year, every every other year. But uh, as as in our spring sport, the the European champs, for example, are also of really really high importance, yeah. even compar comparable to the world champs. And uh, for example, this year we have the. Uh, Forest walk in Switzerland, and then then we have the sprint uh, EOC in uh, Italy, as I as I remember. So I think that uh, all all the runners can can get their desired medals at uh, this or other competition. So uh, I think that it's quite okay. And one thing that it is is of a big advantage, as I would say, that. Uh, if you know that you organize a sprint walk, then you know that you only have to find good cities and good uh, sprint areas. So, yeah. uh, so maybe it it makes it easier for the organizers to to really focus on these disciplines and make them the best possible. And uh, for example, when when walk was uh, just uh, the mixture of everything, just the forest and the sprint races, then then if you got for example great forests then maybe the sprint areas were were okay because that's that's world champs so so they have to be okay but uh, maybe not the greatest possible so i think that it's uh, looking uh, at it from from this side it's uh, it's an advantage of of the, yeah. of the system I, right I, I also try to think about it as, as something that maybe is just necessary for our sport to grow because when i'm thinking okay how do we get orienteering bigger. The, the first thing is, I, I'm not sure if I want it to be bigger, that's the first part, but let's assume that we want it to be bigger and we want to be an Olympic sport, right? So if we want to be an Olympic sport, how do we do it, right? We need uh, a better media coverage for it, right? We need more, um, um, more competitions that will be shown on TV. Uh, and it's much easier to show a sprint race because it's also shorter. Uh, than the forest race, for example, a long distance, right? Which, which takes like four hours, maybe yeah, sure. sometimes even longer sure. for sure. all the runners to mm -hmm. run through. Uh, so when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, okay, so um, maybe that's why we have this, this division to forest and sprint walk so that we can test several different things during the, the sprint walk. We are testing new models of running sprint, new, new variations, right? Like, like this knockout sprint. That has been introduced not so long ago so you know it, it's probably fun for many people to try it out at least uh some of them probably like it as a as a, as a variant um so yeah i think that if i think about it this way i i think that it's it's okay to test these things and you know it, we have to yeah. try things to see what works and you know it's it's it's, it's better than standing still in one place and it, it, maybe it is a way to move forward and if it's not you know, we, we have to learn uh, what what is yeah, wrong. Yeah, if it's it. not, we can always we can always get back to the to the exactly right. Path. So we can learn not what's wrong, draw conclusions, and, and fix it maybe. Yeah. Um, all right. Coming back <laughs> to our course building. Um, did recent sprint map changes impact how the courses are designed? So I'm talking mostly about the changes that have been made around uh, uh, the maps that have to show two levels for the runners. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that uh, that this uh, two levels uh, new features are are really really good right now. I think uh, I I can understand it it uh, it's really really well from uh, as I look on the map, which is of course uh, uh, made in a good way. Yeah. Then I can easily recognize it. So I, I think it's quite uh, intuitive. Intu 
intuitive for for the for the people to recognize uh, uh, where you can go uh, uh, downstairs and when you can go upstairs. Uh, so I really like it. But the the other thing that I that I mentioned when the change came uh, regarding this ISPROM uh, 2019 that uh, almost all the symbols got a bit bigger even the symbol of a single tree for example or uh, or, or or some some uh, some symbol of a paved area and all the symbols get got a bit bigger because i can easily see it on my computer when i just zoom zoom in and and, and try to to make the map uh, precise enough mm -hmm. uh, so i have one thought about it that uh, the, the IOF is, 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 is trying to, uh, to make the map makers, the cartographers, uh, make these uh, maps uh, as readable as possible, to, not to over-exaggerate with too many details, not to put too many of single trees or some uh, black axes or uh, some, some maybe not that important features on this map. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. That's that's how I how I how I think it is. But I I might be wrong. But uh, but as I said, almost all the symbols got a a bit bigger. Of course, when you get the map, if you, you can even not notice it as a runner. But uh, as we as I prepare the courses and the, and and the maps, then then it's easily seen for me. That's interesting. I didn't know about it. Um... Yeah, and I didn't notice it as well. So as, it's probably yeah. as you say when you when you uh, as a runner when you look at the map, you might not see the difference. Cool. Um, what advice would you give to the runners attempting your courses? How do we beat <laughs> your courses successfully? Uh, okay. So oh, the first thing, of course, which comes to my mind is uh, to to be always one step forward. Uh, uh, as I like to to say to myself when I was a runner, uh, just that that my head has to be one step ahead of my legs. So uh, try to to be ahead all the time. Uh, if you if you see that you are getting uh, closer to the line and you don't know where to go next, then okay, slow a bit and try to get get forward to be one step ahead all the time. And and the thing that I also uh, usually mention to my uh, to my uh, friends from my club, for example, the younger runners uh, before the sprint competitions, that uh, uh, I tell them to be brave enough to read the map even more legs uh, forward, not just one leg forward. For example, if you have time, then the, I see no other reason not to look at the map. For example, for when you are on the first leg and you have time then uh, and and you are already know where to go to the second control why don't you check the third four or even find a, a long leg on the course for example from 10 to 11 because the long legs are the most important uh, as uh, as it comes to route choices because as i said if the, co if the course is uh, perfectly set then i think that this longest route choices or, or one of these longest route choices should be decided. So uh, if you choose the right route choice on this long leg, then you should gain more time than picking the right route choice on a 100 meter leg. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what I always try to, try to tell uh, my, my runners that, that, uh, that go for not only for my courses, but, uh, but for all the orienteering courses. And uh, of course, the other thing is to uh, be focused all the time because uh, Sometimes I also like to put some uh, some uh, uh, other controls close to close to each other. Of course, not that close, which which is not uh, possible by the rules. But uh, if it's possible by the rules, that I like to to put some controls close to each other, so so that you have to be careful all the time with the codes and uh, checking if uh, if it's okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, coming back to the topic that we've touched earlier. Uh, I mean, more of you than me. So creating maps for the competitions, the major competitions that are going to happen, like world champs, uh, junior world champs, European champs. Uh, so uh, uh, th there is this theme for many, many years that people use whatever resources are available to build like a mock-up maps, even though it, even if they, the old version of this terrain is not mapped as an orienteering map, uh, it's using Google Street View, you know, satellite images and so on. 
uh, you can create quite a good orienteering map for a, a particular terrain. Um, is it worth it, do you think? Yeah, I, I surely think it is worth it. But personally, I, I can say that uh, uh, me as a runner, and when I approached some, uh, some competitions, and uh, I also tried to prepare some, or some of the maps myself, for example, uh, for the Polish champs uh, in my hometown in, in Uch here, mm -hmm. and, and I really wanted to win. And, <laughs> and the problem was that I lost because I knew the terrain too well and the organizers set a trap uh, because they used some artificial barrier in a place that I completely didn't expect it to be. Yeah. And it was uh, the end of the race. So, uh, so I was uh, uh, already a bit tired, uh, as we uh, already talked about tiredness. And that was a trap for me. And I, I got trapped and lost uh, my gold medal and uh, like finished with silver. So uh, as I as I told you, I think it might be it might be a big advantage, but you have to use it with like uh, with your mindset that uh, you cannot run it by memory because uh, right nowadays we we can always use this artificial barrier. Something in the terrain can change, of course, if that is possible as well. So. Uh, I think that it's very, very nice for the runners and for the coaches to prepare this, uh, this, this maps uh, from from the resources av available. But you have to remember to use it uh, uh, rightly. So yeah. not to learn it by heart, not to learn all the root choices, but by heart. But just to feel that you are better prepared, know the terrain better. But uh, remember that the course uh, uh, and the course is set. Uh, that way, and you have to pick the best route choices on the course, not on your map, but on the map at the, that you get at the competition. I agree. So, yeah. I, I agree. But, a, but I also think I also I also think it's very difficult because um, have you been expecting artificial barriers during that Polish champs race? Yeah, actually, it it was not even maybe an artificial barrier. I said it may be a bit wrong. It it it, it was just a gate which was closed. Yeah. The gate from uh, to the church, which is always opened, and yeah. uh, it was just closed. So maybe it was not artificial barrier, but uh, but it was uh, closed on purpose for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but on the map it was just like a black line, thick line. So uh, it was just something like this. So I didn't expect it at all. So uh, and as I said, this was my this was my problem because I was so sure because knowing the map beforehand, yeah. from my own resources. I was just so sure, okay, an easy pick for me, I go here. And then I just got shocked. Yeah, so I think it's difficult because even if you have this mind, okay, I need to be careful uh, and mind the barriers. Um, at some point during the race, you're already so physically and mentally tired that, yeah, that you know, you it's, look there is a risk that easier, you will forget about it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, sure, uh, sure. That's I have true. experience with it. Um, we had um, EOC competition in Poland some years ago. And as well, we built this uh, mock-up map of the sprint terrain. And we knew that there are going to be barriers um, or we suspected, I'm not sure. Anyway, we definitely took it into account. And um, the, the terrain was not very tricky in terms of uh, the infrastructure. So it was quite easy to build a decent map. So the mock-up was quite good. And uh, the youth have spent quite a lot of time working with this map and figuring out what are the good route choices, as you mentioned. So they, they, they came prepared. Um, and they, they also were supposed to mind the barriers, but uh, at least some of them uh, were still trapped because of the barriers. You know, the, the, the speed of the race, the, the emotions that go with it, uh, the European yeah. Championship, of course. So yeah, it, yeah. it all played sure. this part, and it's, it's, it's hard. So even though we had a gold medal during that sprint race as well at, at that time, uh, Kinga, which was a yeah. yeah Kinga, which was a big I achievement. Uh, so I remember that there were still some very good runners from the, the the Polish team that went into into phase and unfortunately lost some time. Yep. Yeah. So as I said, you have to use it, I think, but uh, but uh, still remember that it's not everything. You you have to on the race day you have to focus on the map that you get on the race day. Okay. Awesome, Rafał. I, I want to end it here. So I think we went through a lot of interesting stuff when it comes to course building, sprint course building. And I, I think we got a glimpse uh, inside your head and you know we understand more about how the things are built. What is your 
thinking process? What is your course design process? What should the runners be looking out for? And I'm, and I'm pretty sure that the things you were talking about are not specific to yourself, but many good course setters are probably thinking along the same lines. So hopefully this has been useful for everyone. And hopefully your sprint races are going to be um, better because of the knowledge that Rafa over here uh, dropped mm -hmm. on, on all of us. So thank you so much, Rafa, for joining and attending uh, the chat. Thanks a lot. And That's hopefully well. we will see each other maybe on the channel in the future, but definitely on some competitions around here. Yeah, surely. Thank you very much and good luck to all the course setters and cartographers.